Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, I'm Sophia. I recently graduated from Washington University in St. Louis and I'm about to start medical school at Columbia Medical School. Last year, I applied to 35 medical schools and I ended up being interviewed by 14 of those and then I was accepted into six. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys the stats that got me interviewed by schools like UPenn, Baylor, UT Southwestern, Cornell, Vanderbilt, WashU, Northwestern, and ultimately got me accepted into Columbia, UC San Diego, Dell Medical School, and others. An application to medical school has a bunch of different components. The most straightforward of these is your MCAT and GPA. Even though medical school is supposed to have a holistic process, a lot of schools still have GPA cutoffs and MCAT cutoffs for students that they want to interview. My GPA was 4.0 and my MCAT was 522, which broke down into 131 on all the sections except CARS, I got a 129. These numbers definitely helped me get my foot in the door with my application so that med school admissions officers would actually look at my application and wouldn't just throw them out. Demographic information is also important for med school applications. So I am an Asian American female and my race is typically overrepresented in medicine. I am also a US citizen and a Texas resident. I attended WashU on a full merit-based scholarship and I majored in psychology. For the extracurricular portion of an application to medical school, think of it as having a bunch of different buckets that you have to fill. These buckets include clinical experience, research, non-clinical volunteering, shadowing, honors and awards, and other activities like being a TA, or having leadership, or being an RA, or studying abroad. For my clinical experience, I had a few hundred hours as a medical assistant working at a bone marrow transplant clinic. So I took a CNA class during the winter break of my freshman year, and then began working at the clinic the following semester, so the spring semester of my freshman year. And then I continued working there until I went abroad my junior year. Every week I did one or two shifts, and each shift was five hours. Working at the clinic was one of my three most meaningful activities that you get to denote on AMCAS. For my research bucket, I worked in three different labs starting from high school. My first lab was a neuroscience lab that I worked in my junior and senior years of high school. I accumulated a few hundred hours from that experience because I also had a summer in the middle and I was able to win a few university level awards from my research there. My second lab was a psychology lab that I joined my freshman year of WashU. It seemed like a cool experience since I had never done psych research before, but it didn't really amount to anything. I ended up just presenting my research in the undergraduate research symposium. My most recent lab and the main one that I wrote about on my AMCAS application was an anesthesiology lab that I joined my sophomore year at WashU. And I stayed with this professor until my senior year, including two summers in between. I worked probably over 1,000 hours in his lab, and at the time that I applied to medical school, I had two co-author publications. Over the course of the application cycle, I had three more articles get published, and I made sure to update my schools as soon as I knew something else was being published. None of the papers I was in was actually a first author publication, they were all like second to fourth author positions. Not every pre-med has to do research to get into medical school, but for me I think it was a critical part of my application, and I still think the vast majority of pre-meds, especially the ones applying to top tier research institutions, have some sort of research experience as an undergrad. For shadowing, I did 100 hours in total in a variety of specialties. These included cardiac anesthesiology, interventional radiology, plastic surgery, oncology, orthopedic surgery, and dermatology. I did my shadowing the summer after my freshman year while I was studying for my MCAT. Because I'm the first in my family to pursue medicine, I didn't have any personal relationships that I could lean on or ask to get in contact with physicians I could shadow. So for basically all of these, I just cold emailed or cold called offices around my area until I got some yeses. 
for my non-clinical volunteering. I started volunteering with the Crisis Text Line the summer after I graduated from high school, and so I had a few hours from there. I also joined this club in freshman year that was called Med Ed, and it was a club focused on doing health lessons for little kids at underserved elementary schools in the St. Louis area. So we did lessons on exercise and healthy eating and really simple first aid things. I stuck with the club until my junior year and I was actually president for a few semesters. I put a lot of effort into med ed, so I created a YouTube channel for them and made some animated YouTube videos to show to the kids when we had to do online volunteering because of COVID. I created our first website, designed our first t-shirts, set up our first fundraiser which raised a few thousand dollars and also a school supply drive for the schools that we were partnered with. So med ed was another one of my most meaningful activities. I also volunteered through my scholarship program at WashU. One of the activities that we did was go to this community garden to pull out weeds and plant new trees and stuff, so that was really fun. And I also created a YouTube video for incoming students in the scholarship, as well as mentor the underclassmen that were in my scholarship family. For the other activities that I participated in and added on my AMCAS application, I studied abroad through DIS Copenhagen. I actually named my study abroad as my last most meaningful activity. Not only did I learn a lot about healthcare and different healthcare systems around the world, it was also really important to my identity and personal growth. Denmark is really ethnically homogenous, and so while we were learning about the healthcare systems, we saw that there were inequities and discrimination, especially against Muslims there. As a Chinese American in Denmark, I also experienced my own racial discrimination, and so I talked about that as part of my description for the activity. I joined the rock climbing team my sophomore year at WashU and stuck with it through the summers and through breaks until my senior year, and I'm still continuing to climb. I even competed with them in an outdoor bouldering competition. I was a teaching assistant for one semester in the psychology department at WashU. I had taken two classes with a professor in the psych department and formed a good relationship with him and so I decided to TA for him and he ultimately wrote a letter of recommendation for me. I was also on the executive board of Chinese Table, which is a club at WashU for students interested in the Chinese language. We would host informal talks once a week to practice the language, and we also had a language exchange program between American-born Chinese students and international Chinese students. I also included YouTube as an activity on my AMCAS application. I listed it as a non-clinical or medical employment opportunity. And the last activity that I included was my hobby of sewing, embroidery, rug making, and other crafts. I wrote about it as a tradition that was passed down from my grandmother and how sewing taught me a lot of the same skills that doctors need, like diligence and focus. For my honors and awards, I had received a lot of scholarships when I was actually applying to college and I made a whole series on that, you can probably find it on my channel. Besides the full ride that I was awarded, I had merit scholarships from Equitable Excellence as well as Burger King. I also won a diversity scholarship through DIS Copenhagen to study abroad. And then I was also awarded a few different summer research fellowships and research related awards and honors. Moving on from activities, your writing is also going to play a really important part in your application. I don't know exactly how well my personal statement was written, but I made sure that I had a cohesive narrative. So my essay began with my first interest into medicine, which was after the passing of my best friend from her battle with cancer. And that was when I took my first Red Cross CPR class. And I really liked learning about life-saving techniques and a little bit of anatomy and physiology, and so I worked through the levels of the courses. I worked as a lifeguard throughout high school, and I actually ended up moving out at 16 to attend boarding school at a STEM-focused academy. There, I was able to do research, which got me more into medicine and science, and then I started at WashU and working at the Bone Marrow Transplant Clinic, which is also a cancer clinic, made my journey come full circle. When I was writing my activity descriptions, I wrote stories for all of them rather than just listing. As a TA, I tutored this many students this many times a week, held office hours this many times. Instead, I wrote about helping a specific student and how we worked together to solve a problem that she had. And I made sure for every activity that I looped back the skills that I learned from it into why it would make me a better physician. So like I said, for my hobby of sewing and embroidery, it taught me diligence and focus. For rock climbing, it showed me how to overcome challenges. 
Research taught me critical thinking, Chinese club showed me the importance of communication, and etc. The last part of an application to medical school is your letters of recommendation. This is the only time the admissions committee is going to read about you from another person's perspective. So I would say that these letters are really, really important to an application. I had a total of five letters of recommendation. One was from the supervisors and doctors at the clinic that I worked at. Two were science professors. And then I had my PI and my psychology professor. These were people that really knew me and still stay in touch with me today. Of course, I didn't get to read any of the things that they wrote, but I think that they were really strong. The last thing I will say about my application that doesn't really fit into a category is that I applied super early. I applied the first day you could submit MCAS and my application was processed the next day basically. I think all of these things came together to help me build a successful application and ultimately got me accepted into medical school. That's everything I have for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at xosophiaxu. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!